Now, Flutterfall's latest release includes some amazing, amazing features to make your apps a lot more robust and user-friendly. And we've covered a lot of those features in some of the previous videos. But there is one feature that I feel is very, very powerful, but is not getting the attention that it deserves. And so in today's video, we are going to be covering this very, very powerful feature that will help you build amazing apps a lot faster. Now, before we get started, as always, all the apps that I built on this channel can be viewed and or cloned via our amazing Patreon community. And so if you're still not a member for our amazing Patreon community, you can learn more and hopefully become a member via the first link in the description below the video. Now, Flutterflow came out with some amazing features that will truly enable you to build awesome apps that are going to be a lot more powerful, easier to build, and a lot more user-friendly. But there is one feature that is unfortunately is not getting as much attention as it deserves. And this is the feature that allows you to create functionality and package it as a library so that you can easily import it in your future apps. And that way you can build your apps a lot faster because you're not constantly reinventing the wheel, okay? And so the idea here is that you're going to build various pieces of functionality, okay? This could be one piece of functionality, or this could be multiple pieces of functionality. And you're going to do it like you usually do, right? When, you know, when you're building an app. But there's going to be an extra step, and that is where you're going to take a set of features that you built, and you're going to export them as a library, so that you can import them in your future apps. And that way, later on, when you're building an app, right? So we have a user, we have the UI, we have the logic, we have the backend, all the, you know, the, the usual uh, app layers, but you'll be able to import this library that you've created here. And that way you may have access to third-party UI widgets. You may have access to third-party logic, you know, custom actions, custom functions, data, you name it, anything that you may package into an app, you will have access to it as part of a third party uh, library that you've built, essentially reusable components that you can leverage in your current and future apps. Okay, so now that I've shown you this diagram, let's go ahead and let me show you how it works in practice. Now, in this first step, you're going to go out and build special functionality. These could be custom actions, custom functions, or custom widgets that do all kinds of interesting things. Okay, so here I have the foundation of an app that will eventually become a library that's going to be exporting various custom things. Okay, so in this example here, I have my library modules. Okay, so for instance, here, I built a very, very flexible calendar widget, okay? So for instance, this calendar widget does a lot of things that the standard built-in calendar widget does not. So for instance, it gives you all of these events, you know, appointment created, updated, deleted, dragged, everything, right? So you can take this calendar widget and you can build an app on top of it, right? You can build a booking app, you can build, you know, any kind of app that you want that needs a calendar. Okay, so let's say you're, you know, you're running a small business uh, and you need to handle bookings. Well, you can simply take this widget, customize it to your preferences, right? So, you know, what do you want to do when, when an appointment is created, et cetera, et cetera. And you have a fully functioning app, okay? And so once you've created this reusable component, the next thing that you want to do is you want to go to your menu. I do that by pressing Command K or control K and you want to type library. Okay. And you're going to have this uh, menu here, app settings, publish as a library. You want to click here and you're going to be on the screen here. Now I already published an initial version of this app here as a library. Okay. So when you initially come here, you're not going to be seeing all of this. Okay. You're essentially going to be seeing this right here. And so what you want to do is you want to give it a version. You want to give it a description and you want to press here, commit changes and publish. So let me go ahead and do it again. So let's say I have a version 1.00. I want to release 1.1. Okay. And I'm going to say, you know, uh, made uh, several 
minor change okay so i'm gonna go ahead and release a new version of this library so here i need to create a commit message uh minor changes i'm gonna hit commit and i'm done okay so now i have a new version okay so so now you know i've made some changes or i've released it for the first time as you're probably going to be doing regardless we now have a new version of this okay so this library is now available to be imported by your other app and so now what you want to do is you want to start building your app like you usually do but instead of building this component from scratch you can actually import it customize it and everything is going to work amazingly okay so here I have a brand new app. I simply just changed this to booking cal calendar. And so now, instead of me going out and creating this component from scratch, which is going to take a long time because I have to build it, I have to test it, I have to make sure everything works as expected. I can use it in this app. Now, before I can actually use the components in that library, right? What I need to do is I need to press Command K or Control K and I want to type dependency, okay? And you're going to be seeing this uh, menu here, App Settings Project Dependencies. You want to click here, and on this screen here, you see your regular dependencies, okay? Now, this is new. This wasn't something that was available to you, but this is all standard, right? When you're building a Flutter Flow app, you're essentially building a Flutter app under the hood. And so you have these various dependencies, right? But what's different here is that you can add a Flutterflow the library, right? Or a Flutterflow dependency, right? So I'm going to click here. And now I have access to my libraries. Now, the one that I want is this one. This one was from before. You can ignore the second one. I want this first one. That This one is the one that I just imported, right? Mo moments ago. Okay. So I'm going to click here. And now it's showing me all the stuff that it's importing okay so it says this is my library modules and in fact this does not just bundle the calendar i also have a bunch of other things right i have a, also a bunch of other widgets that i can use in my app okay but for now we're only interested in the calendar but we're not only importing the widgets right we're also importing api calls we are importing data types which is going to be important in just a couple of moments and we're also importing app states we're importing a lot of things and so I see, you know, and so once I take a look, I can simply close this. And then when I come back here, I can see that this is now part of my app. Okay, so that means that this library has been successfully imported by the app that I'm working on right now. So what does this mean? Well, I can go back over here and let's say I want to display this booking calendar, right? Because I'm building an app for a specific use case let's say i have a a barber shop or something right and so i'm going to click here to insert a widget and we have the standard you know tabs right we have these you know the standard built-in tabs we have these custom widgets that we don't have in this app uh we have this right here templates um you know all of these other things but we also have a new uh tab here right this is components and custom widgets imported from library projects, right? So if you click here, you can see all the widgets that are being imported as part of that library project, okay? So I'm interested in the calendar. I'm going to click on calendar, and now I need to configure it like a regular widget, okay? So I'm going to do width uh, infinity, height, let's say 400. And I also need to configure calendar entries, right? Remember, this is a very customizable, reusable uh, calendar widget, right? So we need to give it entries, okay? So how does this work? Well, as you can see, this is actually a list of data calendar entry type. And because I see this is a custom entry data type, I'm going to go in here into my app state and I'm going to create these entries, right? That I'm going to feed into this uh, reusable component that I just imported, right? So I'm going to click here and I'm going to say entries, okay? So like various appointments, etc. Now here, what do I want to do? I want to select data type. Now, when it comes to data type, guess what? We don't need to redefine the data type. We have imported it, right? So here I can simply select this data type, uh, set it as a list, 
And now we can simply add, you know, create the individual entries, right? We don't have to go out and redefine the data type because that was done in the library, right? And we've imported that along with all the widgets and all the other things. So that is available, okay? So I'm going to click here and I'm going to create three um, entries, okay? So I'm going to say ID one, this is item one. And let's say it's for right now, I'm going to come over here, ID one, uh, item two. And let's say this is for 25th, okay? And the third one, ID two, item two or three, and this is uh, next week, okay? Now you can create obviously as many as you want. It's up to you, right? We are creating, we're customizing our reusable widget, okay? So once I'm done here, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna click here, go into app state and select it, confirm. Okay, so no problem. Now there's one more thing I need to configure. This is initial view. And here you can select day, month, or you know, week. I'm gonna say week. And at this point, it should be happy, right? It should be happy because we've configured it. Okay. So now we have a, a um a reusable widget configured here. Okay. And so in order to show you how it works, right, completely, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna download this code. And I'm going to run it in a simulator so that you can see exactly how it works. Now, there, there are two ways of doing it, right? One way is you can click here and you can do Flutterflow local run. But for that, you want to be using the desktop app. Now, I typically use the web app. So what I need to do is I need to use another approach. And this is something that you can use as well. So we're going to come here. We're going to copy this. I'm going to go to my terminal and I'm going to paste that command. And that's going to go ahead and download my project, right? As a Flutter project. I'm going to switch to the directory and I'm going to load it in Visual Studio Code here. Next, I'm going to select my simulator. So I have this iPhone 15 Pro Max simulator running right here, as you can see. And I'm going to run my app. All right. And now our app is fully functioning. OK, so here we can change the view. So let's say we want to see the month view. Uh, we want to see the day view. We can create different events. We can come over here and let's say you want to see the date view. Well, I can create a new appointment. Okay. So I want to say, um, you know, let's say appointment one, I can, you know, enter the date. There's the time hit. Okay. And now we have this appointment here. And if you go to the month view, you can see that we have this appointment right here. Okay. Now let's say you want to customize this app a little bit. Remember the, uh, library component here, this component here that I built initially, it's very, very customizable. So I can go back here and I can create some kind of a flow, right? Of one of these triggers, right? Appointment created, appointment updated. So let's say I want to use this callback and I want to say that, hey, appointment has been created. And in your app, you can make maybe a Stripe call. You can send an email. You can do all kinds of things. So I'm going to do a snack bar and I'm going to say appointment created. Okay. So now we have a trigger for appointment created. I can also create any of these other flows right that i have made available in this app and now what do i want to do i want to do the same thing i'm going to come here i'm going to copy this paste this command it's going to go ahead and download the whole thing okay we're done we're going to go back to vs code we're going to rebuild our app here and now with the simulator selected we're going to go ahead and run our app and here's our new app and so now we have all the same functionality, but we should also have the feedback, right? When we create a new appointment. So if I come over here and I say appointment one and I fill it out, something like this, we should have this feedback appointment created, which is done via this trigger that is available in this reusable component. Okay. So once you create this component, you can reuse it in all of your apps. Okay. So let me show you another example. Okay. So remember I imported a bunch of components, right? Calendar is just one of them. Right. And so let's say I'm building a different kind of app. Let's say maybe I'm building some kind of a e-commerce app that needs to have tracking that needs to display like different tracking statuses, things like that. Well, I can come over here, click here and guess what? I have this progress pro, which is a progress bar that shows you where you know what's happening with the with the product right with the shipping so i'm gonna click here and i'm gonna go ahead and configure it i'm gonna set the width i'm gonna set the height something like this here we need to have the status right the current status okay and we also need the status names to display so let's say uh the status is uh 
delivered okay and here i'm gonna have the different statuses okay so this is a list of strings and so i'm gonna go over here and i'm gonna create my statuses here right so i'm gonna say status list list of strings i'm gonna click here and i'm gonna create a list of strings now one of them needs to be the status that we've defined which is delivered and so i'm gonna say new I'm going to say pending, I'm going to say um, in progress, and I'm going to say deliver. Okay, and now I'm going to go back and I can feed this back here. So I'm going to go into app state and I'm going to say status list. Okay, and I also have a bunch of other settings to configure. So let's say non-active is this gray color. Let's say active is, and let's say animation duration is two, orientation is one for horizontal okay all right now it should have no issues and i'm also going to change this to like order status okay and so now we're going to do the same thing we're going to go ahead and run this app in an, in a simulator so that it mimics a kind of real world um environment right so we're going to come over here copy this paste that in there download the code go back to visual studio code rebuild the app gonna go ahead and select our ios simulator here and get it started up all right and now we can run the app and there is the app as you can see you, know, you have this really nice animation we do need to give it some padding on the side so let's go ahead and fix that to make sure that it's being displayed correctly let's go ahead and give it some padding thing like this let's go ahead and rebuild it and here's the app with a little bit of padding on each of the sides and now you can see everything perfectly so this is another very very useful component that you can display on your um order status page right if you're building an e-commerce store and you're shipping out a bunch of things the person ordered their shopping cart which they purchased you can display all of this and you can use this as a reusable component okay and and remember these are just a sample of components that i have i have more components right so if i come over here i have two more i have an audio player and i have a youtube player that i can use in my apps and in all of my apps very very quickly and easily simply by importing this library and so this is an amazing amazing feature uh, because it's going to save you a lot of time because we're always building components and we're always trying to reuse these components. So instead of building them from scratch every single time, you can simply reuse them as part of the library. And what's cool about it is that you can also rebuild the library. You can create little updates to your components. And then when, you know, the library is re-imported, you're going to have those changes. So this is another awesome feature it's it's arguably not as flashy as some of the other features that i talked about in the previous videos and if you haven't seen those videos check out uh right there and you should see uh one of the videos where i talked about some of the new features that i really like but still this is a very very awesome functionality that you should definitely be using when you're building your apps now I have a lot of cool components here and i also show you how you can import these components and if you want to be able to kind of see what i'm seeing here and kind of do the same thing and practice and really understand at a deeper level what exactly is happening then you definitely want to be able to view this app on your screen and you also want to be able to clone this app as well this app right here where i'm importing stuff right so you know where i have this project dependency here but also the actual project itself and you'll be able to get access to this app as well as the library modules uh inside of our patreon community and so if you're still not a member click the first link and become a member because when you join you'll get access to all my apps everything that i talk about on this channel it's there right whether this is you know this app another app a, a build ship tutorial another tutorial all the resources are there okay and in addition to that you're going to get access to my weekly podcast uh, my weekly video podcast where i talk about you know things that are happening things that i'm working on get feedback from users see what you know people are dealing with do q and a's stuff like that so that is a big one and above and beyond you're going to be supporting this channel and supporting my words if you're getting value from this you're going to get a lot more value uh, um, 
when you become a member of our amazing Patreon community. So if that all sounds good, sounds like it's going to provide you some level of value, click the first link in the description and join our amazing Patreon community.